Okay, this is CryptPad. Um, it's, this is the V, because the only one. Zero knowledge, real-time visual editor. So real-time editor, you can collaborate with other people. Visual editor means that it has buttons, like bold and italic. And zero knowledge is a cryptographic term, which means that the server can't read what you're editing. Now, a year ago, we, we were trying to figure out how to get real time into XWiki, and it turns out that real time has a lot of problems. Um, the standard, it's known as operational transformation, and that's what we use too. Um, the problem with it is that the complexity grows cumulatively. So you start out like, okay, I'm gonna have multiple people editing text. Great, you, if two people are editing text in the same spot, then you have a transformer which does an operation uh, that takes those two operations and makes them, uh, it harmonizes them. The problem is that if one person makes it bold and another person is just editing text, you need an, an operation uh, transformer for those two operations. And if you have bold and italic, then you need a bold italic transformation and a bold text transformation and a, an italic text transformation. And if you add bullet points and colors, then you need all these different things back and forth. And so each one that you add is makes it more, is more difficult than the last one. And it's, it's very difficult to, once you get into a big number of these things, and that's why things like uh, Google, um, Google Docs, it's, it's just was very expensive to develop, and it's not something that uh, really anybody can approach right now. Um, it's not portable. Uh, the same code, the same algorithm, and all of these uh, transformers uh, has to run in your browser and on the server. Um, so you're pretty much limited to either writing it in Java and compiling it with GWT into JavaScript so that it runs in the browser, or you write it in JavaScript and then you host JavaScript on the server in Node.js. Uh, that in open source, that doesn't really work. We have lots of languages. We, everybody likes to do things in different languages and, and uh, that, that non-portability would cause a big problem for the open source community because we couldn't share each other's work. Um, and lots of calculation happens on the server. So the idea that you would have a zero knowledge uh, real-time editor, uh, until recently that was just impossible. So we developed Chainpad um, and we, we decided to take an entirely new direction. We wanted to keep everything in the browser, uh, which was a, a wild idea at the time, um, because you have multiple people editing and the, they collide. So, so you both edit in the same spot. So what happens? Everybody needs to come to agreement. All the browsers need to come to agreement on what the document actually is. And if you're doing it with zero knowledge, which we wanted from the beginning, we wanted to have the idea of being able to do that, even if. Uh, we were not going to implement it. Um, well, that means that the server uh, it can't, can't break a tie. The, the, the users, the browsers, need to either elect somebody to be in charge or somehow break the tie or use Nakamoto blockchains, which some of you might know as Bitcoin, a way to decide what reality is without any central server. So that's what Chainpad is. That's where the name Chain came from. Um, and it's, it's, it's a Bitcoin-derived algorithm. And after we, we did this, the server became just a simple message relay server. All it did was, oh, yeah, this guy has made a change. Um, we could probably eliminate the server entirely. That might be interesting. Uh, so how it differs from Etherpad, to recap, um, the operational transform is carried out in the browser, which makes the change. Uh, that means that we're right next to the DOM, right next to the, the browser, the visual representation of the document, and the operational transformations all happening in the same spot. So we actually did something really crazy, and we decided that instead of trying to write all these transformations, we would just treat the HTML as text and do operational transformation on HTML syntax. Um, because we're just working on the DOM, it works with any editor, as I'll demo in a minute. Um, very little server code, and in two days of furious hacking, which comes to me occasionally, 
Um, I, I, I decided that uh, I was, I was uh, uh, feeling upset with the problems in the world and I, I wanted to write something. I wanted to change the world. And I decided to take this work that we've been doing and, and really make the cryptography happen, make the, the zero knowledge promise a uh, reality. And I, I, I took what had been chain pad and I bolted on a little bit of standard cryptography and put the URL, uh, the, the key into the URL hash. So you see the, the hash there, that's never sent to the server. That key, everything after the pound, is, is not sent to the server. The server sees nothing, no, knows nothing, and that key is used to, uh, it, it can be used to decrypt the content that's on the server. I ported the server code from Java to Node.js, and I ported the client code from XWiki's WYSIWYG to CK Editor in two days. Uh, and a demo. Um, so I picked a really, really basic key. Uh, you should not use a, a key like this in reality. And this is the IP address of my laptop. So, and I will take this and yeah, okay, somebody, somebody wrote, just wrote it here. Uh, can you make that big or I'll make it big? There. So, all right, so uh, I'm going to let you guys play with that and go back to the slides. Um, I'm gonna, and I'm going to leave this in the slides. Now, it's not over yet. Never over. What do we want to do next? Um, I want to know how far this DOM, this idea of working directly in the DOM can go. Uh, can we do collaborative drawing? Uh, there's this SVG edit. Uh, maybe, maybe that will work. I, I want to see how far we can push the idea of arbitrary operations on the DOM. Um, can we get rid of the server? Do we want to get rid of the server? Is, is there a reason why we want to get rid of, may, maybe a dumb server is an okay server, maybe we don't care, but maybe we do, maybe there's a use case. Um, it's an interesting research problem, um, and it's a problem that you get closer and closer to actually how the Bitcoin software works as you start getting rid of the server. Um, but this tool, Cryptpad, not Chainpad. Chainpad was developed as a, an extension to XWiki. Cryptpad was developed as an extension to me. Um, I developed this because I feel like there's uh, a group of people out there who are just not getting what they need from open source. They, they're, they're a group of people who are not served by, they can't be served by closed source software because they don't have the, the monetary resources. And these are the people who I feel that we owe something to, where, where we're, we're doing well, and we, we owe something to them. And I'll just leave you with a picture of this demographic, the people who need us, and, and the people who are going to live in the world that we're creating. And if you have any questions, and there are the slides, the source code, and the real-time editor. <laughs>